He also wanted us to differentiate between angina pectoralis and an MI. So let's talk about this. Um, angina is temporary ischemia. We have different types of angina. We have stable, which is predictable. We have unstable, which is not predictable, but both stable and unstable are associated with atherosclerotic plaque or coronary artery disease. You also have this other type of, um, of, uh, of angina called variant or prince metals. This is caused by vasospasms. That one can happen while you're sitting down chilling and it'll just um, start spasming, you'll develop the angina. Um, myocardial, so again, that's angina. And I'm gonna go from there to the interventions real quick. Because when you have um, angina, you treat it with nitrates. You give nitroglycerin. Well, first you have the patient reduce the cardiac workload. How do we do that? By having them sit down, stop moving, right? If that, usually that will eliminate the chest pain. If it doesn't, we can give um, nitrates, nitroglycerin sublingual three times with five minute intervals. And at that point, you got to also have to remember, you got to educate your patient. They'll have a tingling sensation under the tongue. Uh, their blood pressure may drop. They may have a headache because you have a lot of vasodilation that occurs. And that's how we alleviate the anginal, the anginal pain. If the pain persists, then we potentially we, we think it's an MI. So a myocardial infarction is a heart attack where the myocardium experiences necrosis. And generally speaking, um, we treat it with the following. Talk about Mona. So morphine to reduce the workload, meaning if you're in a lot of pain, your, your muscles are contracting, they're burning oxygen that's supposed to be for the heart. So we give morphine to reduce the cardiac workload. We give oxygen to maximize oxygenation. We give nitrates to open up blood vessels and we give aspirin to prevent um, platelet aggregation. So they won't develop clots later on. Medications, we give thrombolytics um, or fibrinolytics. These are medications that dissolve blood clots. These are powerful drugs. These are not to be confused with your anticoagulant drugs. These ones dissolve blood clots. And we have to give it within six hours from the onset of chest pain. That's important for you guys to know because I think that's what he wanted us to know. We could also do cardiac catheterization um, through the femoral or brachial artery. And what we have to know a lot about this is the catheter goes into the femoral artery or brachial artery, depending on where we have better access. We have to do our assessment before and after. The neurovascular assessment of the extremity, the circulation, the motion sensation, before and after to compare to make sure that the catheter did not disrupt the blood flow to that extremity later on. And this right here talks about um, your, what we call the STEMIs and non-STEMIs. This is coinciding with this, with the uh, rhombolytic, your tissue plasminogen activator or your activase, whatever you want to call it. So there's something called a non-STEMI and there's something called a STEMI. What you need to know is that a non-STEMI, and this is usually uh, verified in the ECG through the, the ST segment, as you can see right here, right? So if it's a non-STEMI, that means that um, there is potentially a severe occlusion in a small coronary artery or partial occlusion in a large coronary artery. Nonetheless, you do not give thrombolytics to, to non-STEMIs. The risks outweigh the benefits. But when you have a STEMI, a STEMI will be receiving your thrombolytics, that TPA, because it's a complete occlusion of a larger coronary artery. And that, we need to get rid of that clot. And we don't care if the patient's going to be at risk for bleeding. We could give them blood transfusions during the acute phase of an MI. We can't bring that heart muscle back to life if it dies. So that's why we can give thrombolytics for this one, the STEMI, but not the non-STEMI. Okay. Did I cover everything? Yeah. 